Hey friends, Ash here with Gen Sense, and today we're gonna to be going over my top 10 choices for niche fragrances for winter 2020 slash 2021. Technically, niche and indie. I lump those together in the same video. And this video is brought to you by Scentsplit. Dot com. And I've got a link in the description to Scentsplit and each one of these fragrances in this list as well. In case you're unaware of Scentsplit for any reason, they're one of the best websites on the internet to buy authentic decants and samples of fragrances, especially niche and indie ones that are typically a little bit more expensive. So you can buy a nice sized decant, try out the fragrance, see if you really like it, and then buy a full bottle if you do, instead of blind buying the bottle and maybe not really liking it. So thank you to Scentsplit for sponsoring this video. Again, link in the description. Let's jump into this. A lot of these fragrances here today are gonna have similar note breakdowns, but they do their own thing, each one of these. And I think each one of these is fantastic. Each one is gonna be on the warmer side of things, obviously being for winter, and most of these are really good performers as well. Let's start it off with number 10 from Parfums de Marly, Wajan. This one has cinnamon, honey, benzoin, tonka, and vanilla as some of the notes in the fragrance. So yes, there's this nice spicy facet, a warm spicy facet, but really, it's all about that sweetness. And look at those notes again, honey, benzoin, tonka, vanilla. All those notes are very prominent in this fragrance and they're gonna give you a good, good amount of sweetness. This one draws some comparisons to Hermes Ombre Nargui and yeah, there's a little bit of a similarity there between the two. Even with that similarity though, this fragrance smells awesome. It's great during the day, great during the evening, really cuts through the cold. Like I said before, very warm, sweet, spicy, addictive, alluring, inviting, all those things. And this year, comes in at number 10. Let's go from a decently large size bottle to a small size bottle from Nasamato Pardon. This one has oud, dark chocolate, tonka, and sandalwood as some of the notes in the fragrance. And this one right here, this little tiny bottle, is my favorite fragrance from the house of Nasamato. Here recently I did a review of Fantomas, which is Pretty good fragrance. I actually liked it a lot more than what the general consensus seems to be, but that one is really not close to this. The oud in here is not really off-putting. Actually, this fragrance gets compared sometimes to L'Anston de Guerlain Extreme from Guerlain. And that is a fragrance that I love. I've talked about it a whole bunch, so not really a big surprise that I like this one as well. Great, great performance here. The woodiness is fantastic in this scent, very masculine in my opinion. And this one is another one that's great during the day or the evening. And this one I would wear to the office as well, but don't go too heavy with it. Number eight is from the House of Amouage. This one I really put off on getting or picking up for way too long, way too long. I wanted to pick it up when it was brand new and I kept putting it off, putting it off, putting it off and I didn't realize it would be as good as it is. It's this one, Overture Man. With this fragrance, before I got it, before I smelled it, I thought it was gonna be mainly cognac. Like cognac forward and then other things supporting it. I mean, look at the fragrance coloration here. You know, it kind of gives that idea, that boozy sweetness. At least, that's what I thought. There's also myrrh in here, there's sandalwood, there's actually smoke. You can pick that smokiness up right away. This one is just so high quality. The opening, I absolutely love, love it. It's a big blast though. The opening is powerful. It's a blast that lasts, trademarked. As it dries down, it does get a little bit easier to wear. Uh, the opening might turn some people off, but I actually think the opening's the best part. It's got a little bit of an animalic facet initially. It has that smoke, it's got that myrrh. It's got that cognac, mm, really good. It's gonna take me to number seven. This one from the house of DS and Durga, Bowmakers. Yes, this fragrance is great, especially if you love woodsy fragrances with resin. That is what this is all about. If you don't like that, you won't like this. If you do like that, you will like this. This one's got mahogany, it's got resins, it has pine, it has maple. The woods in here have a spiciness to them. They've got a little bit of a bite. It is just fantastic. This is a really well put together fragrance. Like I said though, you don't like woody fragrances, ones that are, are very unapologetically woody. 
then you might not like this one. Diaz and Durga is a house that I absolutely love. I think that they really do uh, dark fragrances the best. So their fall and wintertime fragrances, that's what I really love from the house. And this one is top notch, one of the best. Now, if I already owned a bottle of Amber Kiso from Diaz and Durga, which I don't own yet, but that is top of my list as far as fragrances from this house to own, I would put that in here over Bowmakers. So just keep that in mind. That one, that one is some awesome stuff. I talked about it in my DS and Durga top 10 video. You can search that on the channel if you want, but Bowmakers is still fan freaking tastic. Gonna take me to number six, this one from the house of Tower Perfumes, Andy Tower. It is number three, Lone Star Memories. This one has leather, myrrh, vetiver, and labdanum as some of the notes in the fragrance. This, this stuff. All I gotta say. The leather here is pungent. Some people might say it's a little bit animalic, but I think it's just, just right. It has a real punch to it. It's got a real presence to it. And the vetiver that comes in as this dries down is just icing on the cake. You do have myrrh in here, you've got labdanum, so you get a little bit of that, that resinous warmth that comes out as well. But this one really for me, what grabs me, what holds me, what keeps me coming back is the leather. So for this year, this is the leather fragrance that I wanna be wearing. It's gonna take me to number five, this one from Imaginary Authors, Cape Heartache. Ah, I love Cape Heartache. This one and Memoirs of a Trespasser are my two absolute favorites from the house. This is an old school bottle. You won't really find one like this anymore unless you find one for sale on eBay or some random person is getting rid of their old bottle, but I don't think you should do that. You should keep it. I actually love, 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 love these old presentations. I know that they're better now. Um, they used to be 60 mil size, now they're 50, but something about these old school ones I just think is, is the best. So like all imaginary author's fragrances, got the notes right on the back. Douglas fir, pine resin, western hemlock, vanilla leaf, strawberry, old growth, and mountain fog. So you've got those two imaginary notes in here, old growth and mountain fog. This is one of the best pine forest scents that you're ever gonna smell. It does have a little bit of sweetness coming in from the strawberry. Some people sometimes don't like that as much. I think it's amazing, 10 out of 10. This one right here is one of my all time favorite fragrances. Some people might say that Imaginary Authors is more of a, an artistic house with some of their fragrances, but I still think Cape Heartache is completely wearable, just like Lone Star Memories, I think, is completely wearable. This one is one of the fragrances I will just sit and smell for myself. I think it's just so damn good. It's gonna take us to number four. It's this bad boy, Creation E, or Enigma, whichever one you wanna call it, Parfum Cologne from Rajo Parfum. This one has got some notes in common with this one. So we've got cognac in here, we've got benzoin in here, we have vanilla in here, and also tobacco. This one has a really nice opening. It's sparkly, effervescent, sweet, warm, spicy. It smells absolutely fantastic. Uh, some people will say, kind of reminds them of a carbonated beverage, just the way that it kind of bubbles and pops off your skin. That maybe doesn't sound the best, uh, but it is. It's, it's nice, bubbling and popping. I just mean to say it's effervescently sweet and uh, smells really, really good. Very inviting, very warming, very sexy. The Parfum Cologne version, a little bit more affordable than the other versions of the fragrance and also being part of the Parfum Cologne collection, really made to be a little bit more mass appealing, a little bit easier to wear. Not that Creation E or Enigma, any version is difficult to wear in my opinion, but still yet. We're in the top three now, the home stretch. Number three, almost dropped it, <laughs> is this one, Idole de Lubon. This, this is good, good stuff. It's dark, a little bit mysterious, sexy, grown up, gentlemanly, with a nice edge. And uh, it smells a little bit similar to Bentley from In Intense. So if you're on a really big budget, you could potentially go for the Bentley and get something you know, similar, something in the same ballpark. If you have the money though, this is the one you want. It has rum, saffron, leather, and ebony wood as some of the notes in the fragrance. Like I said, this one is dark, it's mysterious, it's got a nice edge to it, it's got a good amount of spice in there, and the woodiness in here really, really, really works perfectly in the evening. 
We've got a little bit of booziness from the rum, not overly sweet though. Good performance here, lasts a long time. And the bottle, ooh, that looks great. All right, top two. Number two is Tango from Mask Milano. This one has amber, tonka, benzoin, and cinnamon as some of the notes in the fragrance. And you might look at this and think, hey man, that bottle's really small, just like this one, the Nasamato. You might think, that's not gonna last a very long time. But this fragrance has really nice performance. You don't need a whole heck of a lot to go a long way, and it smells killer. This is gonna be one of the best amber fragrances you're ever gonna smell. Stuff is just fantastic quality, and that little bit of sweet cinnamon that's in here, like a few of the other fragrances here, perfect. The warmth that's in here, which really, I mean, you can look at that fragrance and tell, is just exquisite. This stuff cuts through the cold. It is absolutely perfect for cuddling up in the winter. And that's gonna take me to number one. It is a Moage Interlude Black Iris. Uh, I love this stuff. This one has leather, oud, olibanum, and of course, oris or iris. This is just fantastic stuff. It really is. And at this point, I know this is kind of sacrilege. I think I like this more than the original. The orris that's put in here really helps round everything out. It's more wearable. The opening is not as aggressive. Some people are gonna not like it because of that or not like it as much as the original because the original really you know, hit you with this forceful opening. Whereas this one reins things in a little bit. The little bit of animalic edge that the original had, you're not gonna find that here. It still has a lot of oomph, a lot of character, a lot of power with that leather and that oud, but it's just done in such a way that makes it more accessible, more likable, and frankly, more enjoyable. So interlude Black Iris for me, that is number one. This stuff, if you have not smelled it, try to get a sample. Oh, this stuff is so good. So there we go, my top 10 niche and indie fragrances for winter 2020 slash 2021. These fragrances right here just really do it for me. Let me know in the comments below some of the fragrances that you're wearing this winter. What are some of the fragrances that you're wearing that just cut through the cold, that really do it for you, that work for you? Let me know. Again, shout out to Scent Split. Link in the description to their website and each one of these fragrances. Stay safe out there, guys. Thanks for your support. See you tomorrow with another fragrance video. See you guys.